If the device type defines what data is on board a device and where it is stored, the profile defines what data we want to retrieve and what to do with it. The process begins on the Create Device Profiles tab with the Add Edit button. Here, I have the same four options as with the device type and tags, and I'm going to click Create New. The quirk here is that you must click Next at the bottom of the page for the rest of the page to activate. My profile's name should be something meaningful. I like to include the project name in the profile name because that indicates they are custom profiles and it will keep them together later in the process. The type field is used by the OneLine engine to indicate what type of logic should be used on the diagrams. And the selector below allows you to choose a default diagram component. I'll explain what this means in the graphics editor videos. Both of these values can be overridden later, but it'll save you some time if you can choose a component now. If I click Next again, I can select the device type to base my profile on. I can select multiple device types here to create what's called a composite profile, but that is a more advanced topic. For now, I'll stick with one meter and click Next. On this dialog, I'll select which tags I want in my device profile. For my simple type here, I want all of the tags, so I'll double click the top of the tree. You could also go through and add individual tags or remove them from the right pane. You may not always want to include all points either to reduce the communications load on a serial connection or because the points don't exist. For example, if you have an expandable I.O. module, you could create a single device type with all possible inputs, then break this out into separate profiles. Also, note the override tag name button. This allows me to keep the addressing for the tag, but replace its name IEC tag name and item name with those of another tag. If I know my meter will always be reading a breaker status on its input, I can change it to that tag. The next window allows me to select PC-based alarming and trending using the variable tags we've selected. We will discuss these features in more detail later in their respective sections. But remember that these features exist in the profile editor. Also, if I need to set specific communication parameters, I can check these fields as needed to add the options to the parameters database automatically when the devices are added. We'll discuss what these parameters do when we get to troubleshooting. Finally, I can click Finish to go back and work on my next profile or check Close Wizard and Finish to Exit. There may be some other options to select, however. Under Trend Tags, I see the tags I checked to add trends to, and I can edit their trend intervals if I so desire. Under PC-based alarm tags, I can modify the default alarm level of the tags. Finally, I checked a driver parameter so I can come in and modify its default as well.
When done, I'll save my profile and move on. The last major step is to set up my project in Profile Editor and export, which we will cover in the next video. Until then, thank you. Thank you.